Welcome to the most epic family reunion to which you've never been invited. Today, we're diving deep into the story of three insect cousins, cockroaches, praying mantises, and termites, each of which has been around so long they probably helped dinosaurs file their taxes. We're piecing together this family drama using both traditional rock fossils, nature's tintypes, and amber, basically nature's Instagram stories. Let's start with everyone's favorite misconception. Cockroaches have been unchanged for hundreds of millions of years. <coughs> Wrong answer, but thanks for playing. These insects from 350 million years ago weren't cockroaches at all, but rather their distant cousins called rochoids, or blood of parents. I try saying that five times fast after eating a beetle. These Carboniferous rochoids were like nature's first draft, you know, like the first pancake that never quite turns out right, but paves the way for pancake perfection. The Carboniferous period was Earth's attempt at a greenhouse party gone wild. Oxygen levels were 35% compared to today's measly 21%, turning the planet into the equivalent of a tropical spa resort for insects. Picture prehistoric swamps with bugs living their best possible life, posting to Instagram. But just like every good party, it had to end. The late Permian period rolled around, dropping oxygen levels and making the climate drier, like a strict parent turning off the lights at the prom. This is when our story's real stars, the modern Dictoptera, made their entrance. Fast forward to the early Cretaceous, when we meet the true cockroaches, the insects that launched a thousand pest control companies and about as many B-movies. Hollywood has had a field day with these apartment crashers, giving us classics like The Cockroach That Ate Cincinnati, and They Came From The Drains, and everyone's favorite nuclear nightmare, The Giant Cockroach That Ate Tokyo. While these films took some uh, creative liberties, spoiler alert, cockroaches don't actually grow to the size of buildings, even with nuclear radiation, they did get one thing right. These weren't your average bugs. They were the first influencers with features that would make a tech startup jealous. Their most notable innovation? Their pronotum, a shield-like plate covering their head. It's like they invented the football helmet before football was cool. Early specimens show the structure gradually getting bigger and flatter, proving that cockroaches understand the importance of good head protection in a world full of giant feet. Let's talk about their wings, the engineering marvel that puts modern aircraft to shame. Unlike their rochoid ancestors who were still figuring out the flying thing, modern cockroaches developed specialized wing structures with distinct vein patterns. They're the origami masters of the insect world, with their tegmina hardened forewings, protecting their delicate hindwings. Some specimens even preserve the early stages of wing folding mechanisms. Basically, they learned to parallel park before cars were invented. But perhaps their most important feature, the uteca, the sophisticated egg case that makes modern day baby carriers look like something from the Flintstones. Amber fossils have caught female cockroaches literally carrying their eggs around like prehistoric soccer mobs. Early specimens show more primitive versions of these structures like watching the evolution of baby gear from wrap it in a leaf to deluxe all-terrain egg carrier with LED lighting and climate control. The sensory systems? Pure genius. Their antenna and cerci, this rear sensory appendages, became increasingly sophisticated, allowing them to detect minute air movements, chemical signals, and environmental changes. It's like they upgraded from a flip phone to the latest iPhone Pro Max but for detecting when someone was about to squash them. Enter the mantises, who decided that meditation and martial arts were their thing. These guys evolved during the late Jurassic to the early Cretaceous periods, showing up to the family reunion with nunchucks and a black belt. And boy, did Hollywood notice. From the deadly mantis, where a giant praying mantis emerges from the Arctic ice, to queen of the mantis people, featuring humans turning into mantis hybrids. These peaceful-looking predators have starred in some of the most delightfully ridiculous monster movies ever made. Although named for their distinctive folded raptorial forelegs that make them look like they're deep in meditation, they're actually about as peaceful as a mixed martial arts tournament. It's just one vowel from praying to praying, 
And boy, do these guys lean hard into that second spelling. Their hunting style is somewhere between a ninja and that one friend who camps in video games. They'll either stalk their prey like a tiny green special forces operative or just sit there menacingly waiting until when their attack is so fast and makes fast and furious movies look like they're being played in slow motion. The evolution of their deadly forelegs is a story of dedication to the craft. Early fossils show them as the evolutionary equivalent of a kid trying to use chopsticks for the first time. Lots of good intention, not so much on execution. Amber fossils preserve the gradual transformation from basic grabby appendages to specialized catching and gripping tools. Like watching someone slowly master the art of chopsticks until they can catch flies midair. And those eyes. They developed some of the most sophisticated vision in the insect world. Amber specimens preserve the development of their distinctive pseudopupils and the gradual enlargement of their compound eyes, showing the evolution from maybe that's food to I can count the wings on that fly from three branches away. Finally, we have the termites, the family members who decided that living alone was overrated and founded the first insect commune. While they might not have starred in as many monster movies as their cousins, apparently Hollywood thinks giant termites aren't scary enough, they've still inspired their share of echo horror films. Empire of the Termites imagined psychic termites organizing a worldwide uprising, while the savage swarm featured termites developing a taste for more than just wood. These tiny demolition experts may not need mutation or radiation to be terrifying enough. They cause more property damage than floods and fires combined. Your unprotected home is basically their version of an all-you-can-eat Vegas buffet, open 24-7, no reservation required. Their transition to social living came with some major renovations in the termite body plan. They developed specialized gut structures that would make a TARDIS look small on the inside, complete with their own line of microorganisms doing all the heavy lifting of wood digestion. Today, early amber specimens track this progressive development, including an enlarged hindgut that would eventually house these symbiotic microorganisms. Some specimens even preserve traces of these ancient gut microbes. It's like finding the original sourdough starter, but for wood eating. Their society is divided into distinct castes. Workers, the entry-level employees who never get promoted but do all the actual work. Soldiers. The security team, basically bouncers with built-in weapons. And finally, reproductives. Upper management, queens specifically in charge of making more termites. The evolution of termite communication is particularly fascinating. They developed specialized exocrine glands for chemical signaling that makes our social media look primitive. Imagine if Facebook was operated entirely by smell. That's the technology termites developed millions of years ago. These specimens reveal how termites gradually developed their sophisticated chemical communication system, which modern colonies use to coordinate activities, mark trails, and signal danger. And here's where it gets dark. When times get tough and food is scarce, workers resort to what we'll politely call involuntary resource distribution of their nutritionally dependent estimates, aka cannibalism. Think of it as their version of downsizing, but with more protein. It's like soy and green, but with termites, reducing the metabolic footprint of the colony by, well, reducing the number of feet in the colony. So there you have it, three branches of one family tree, each taking a different path to success. Whether it's surviving anything, cockroaches, ninja-style hunting, mantises, or building elaborate socialist societies, termites, these bugs have proven that there's more than one way to make it in this world. By combining evidence from both traditional fossils and amber specimens, we're continuing to refine our understanding of how these remarkable insects evolve. Each new amber discovery adds another piece to this evolutionary puzzle, sometimes challenging what we thought we knew, like finding an old family photo that proves your grandpa really did have that questionable mustache. Thanks for joining me on this journey through time. If you enjoyed this exploration of some of Earth's most successful creatures, don't forget to like and subscribe for more fascinating stories about our natural world. And let me know what you think about this amazing journey through time.